Second belief is that we live in very dangerous times. Uh, this is reflected in the two sites that I gave, one by General Depsey, who said in February of 2012 that we are living in the most dangerous times in my lifetime right now. And Dempsey, according to Wikipedia, was born in the early 1950s, so his lifetime includes the Cuban Missile Crisis, the various Berlin crises, and the Cold War more generally. Uh, and then there's Senator Inhofe from Oklahoma, uh, who was born in 1934, and as you all know, Adolf Hitler took power in Germany on January 30th, 1933. Senator Inhofe has said in March 2013, I don't remember a time in my life where the world has been more dangerous and the threats more diverse. Now, let me lay out my views on these particular set of arguments, uh, and I'll take them in reverse order. First of all, the claim that we live in an insecure world is not a serious argument. We are the most secure great power in the history of the world, and we are more secure now than we have been at any time in our history. The best way to illustrate this is by talking about isolationism in the 1930s and early 1950s. Uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt had an enormously difficult time defeating the isolationists. And the reason he had an enormously difficult time defeating the isolationists is because the isolationist case is so powerful. It's not politically correct to say that in the United States today, but it's true. It wasn't that Roosevelt was up against a bunch of lunatics who had crazy ideas. He was up against very smart people who had a very powerful argument. I believe the, the isolationists were ultimately wrong, but nevertheless you do not want to underestimate the power of that argument. The isolationist case was built around the claim that we had two giant moats that separated us from the rest of the world, and therefore nobody could get at us. That argument was being made at a time when Imperial Japan was on a rampage in Europe, and Imperial, I mean Nazi Germany, was on a rampage in Europe. Isolationists could not be defeated by Roosevelt. It took Pearl Harbor to defeat the isolationists. Well, today, those two giant moats remain intact. We have thousands of nuclear weapons, the ultimate deterrent. Virtually everybody in my business believes if you have nuclear weapons, nobody is going to invade you. And furthermore, the vast majority of people inside the Beltway believe we live in a unipolar world. By definition, that means there's one power on the planet. That one power is us. Furthermore, in the Western Hemisphere, we are a regional hegemon. There's not a single country in this hemisphere, in our neighborhood, that would give us any trouble. Please explain to me how a country that's separated from Europe and Asia by two giant moats, that has thousands of nuclear weapons, is the only great power on the planet, and is a regional hegemon, is insecure? We are not insecure. General Dempsey's comment that we are living in the most dangerous times in his lifetime is not a serious argument. I lived during the Cold War. It was much more dangerous. The Cuban Missile Crisis is much more dangerous than anything we have today. The Soviet Union was a formidable adversary. We have no formidable adversary. We live in a unipolar world. Who is out there who's so threatening? And Senator Inhofer, you just sort of find it hard to fathom what he's talking about. He was born in 1934. From 1934 to 1945 is 11 years. During those 11 years, Adolf Hitler was alive. Nazi Germany was intact. And he's telling us that the world is more dangerous today? Please, tell me who's out there. And of course, the argument is terrorism. Terrorism is a minor threat. It's just not that serious a threat. Yes, we got hit on September 11th. Yes, that was tragic. That was not a devastating attack. And if you look at what's happened since, it's hard to see what's out there that we're so scared about. Is there some possibility that we'll get hit again? Yes. But that is not the equivalence of going one-on-one -on -one with the Soviet Union or going one-on-one -on -one with Nazi Germany. There's no great power out there. They're a bunch of terrorists who really can't get at us. And if they can get at us, they can't do that much to us. And the idea that they're going to get nuclear weapons and we're going to be hit with a handful of <coughs> nuclear weapons in the foreseeable future, in my opinion, is not a serious argument. It's 
So what are we worried about? The shoe bomber? I don't go to bed at night worrying about the shoe bomber, the underwear bomber. I mean, who's out there? Just hard to see. So we do have to worry about the world. And as many of you know, I believe that there is a security competition coming up, and it's going to be with China, and it is going to be really serious. I'm not an isolationist. Right? I'm in favor of the pivot to Asia, and I'm in favor of containing China. But excuse me, today there is no great threat that justifies the kind of rhetoric that we hear from people like General Dempsey and the senator from Oklahoma.